afternoon. This is LifeWell, Digital Lifestyle Medicine. So poor lifestyle behaviors account for the greatest percentage of healthcare spending in America. Nearly all U.S. adults have one of these poor lifestyle behaviors, and among those that do, most have two or more. They are very costly to the healthcare system, and they are a significant burden to individuals, but importantly, they are fixable. So what am I talking about when I say poor lifestyle behaviors? Heavy alcohol use, tobacco use, drug use, poor sleep, poor diet, physical inactivity, stress, and poor emotional well-being. We can all take stock of how many of those we have in the room. And this is where lifestyle medicine comes in. If we can improve these health behaviors, we can wipe out nearly 40% of healthcare costs. Lifestyle medicine is preventive healthcare and self-management focused on helping people improve their lifestyle behaviors. And we have a solution. This is, well, this is how LifeWell works. For the user, it's a smartphone application that allows individuals to track their lifestyle goals, to set lifestyle, uh, sorry, to track their lifestyle goals, to, to track their behaviors using diaries and active prompts, pass, passive smartphone sensing, and to connect wearables if they use any devices, and to change their behavior using evidence-based tools and coaching. And on the back end, we crunch your data using machine learning and math algorithms to generate your unique integrated lifestyle profile and derive actionable insights to promote lifestyle behavior change. Our holistic approach decreases stigma. It reduces the stigma around any given lifestyle behavior. Uh, basically, you know, for example, a lot of people who have an alcohol problem feel a lot of stigma if they have to go to an AA program, but to use something like a smartphone app would feel a lot better. So it reduces the stigma around any given lifestyle behavior. It's adaptable. You start where you want. We help you to discover the lifestyle behaviors you didn't know about. So for example, learning that your sleep problem may be related to your alcohol use. We validated LifeWell in two NIH-funded trials in nearly 200 young adults. Participants saw significant increases in their healthy behaviors and significant decreases in their unhealthy behaviors. So what is the experience for a user? Let's walk through this participant example so I can walk you through what someone might experience. So the next day, a young adult records their behaviors from the day before, including the total number of drinks that they may have consumed at a party. These drinks are then quantified into an estimated blood alcohol score. This score is then connected to their other lifestyle behaviors, such as their diet, their sleep, and potentially other health biometrics, such as their heart rate. Tailored advice, coaching, and evidence-based tools are then offered to help them lower their blood alcohol level at their next drinking occasions, as well as to reduce its negative impact on their health. So as others have mentioned, uh, just like the person before me, there are companies obviously in this space. These are our key differentiating factors. We address all lifestyle behaviors together. We decrease stigma. You come into a general lifestyle program rather than having to come into an alcohol program. And we emphasize lifestyle risk discovery. It bypasses the, the need to self-identify that you have a problem. We help you to discover the problems you didn't know about. So as all of you know, the current US healthcare market focuses on paying for specific conditions and paying for specific behaviors. So our go-to market strategy is really gonna focus on addressing the, the areas of greatest need and then expanding to other categories as the company grows to, to ultimately address the entire spectrum. So for our first addressable market, we're going to focus on addressing heavy alcohol use with young people. And we're gonna work with colleges to roll out alcohol reduction programs. These are actually great programs to go after because they're typically well-funded programs looking for real solutions. And in line with how colleges structure these programs and offer them and pay for them, we would offer this to all students, for example, all incoming freshmen, and then as a referral for those students with more problems. From there, we would then expand to pre-surgical lifestyle medicine and address what are often mandated behavioral requirements before surgery, for example, smoking cessation and weight loss. And here we really want to augment what we already do at Yale New Haven Hospital in our clinic by offering these services with a digital solution. From there, we would then expand to chronic disease lifestyle medicine and addressing lifestyle behavior change longer term with individuals with more chronic conditions. And again, to already augment the work we do at Yale New Haven Hospital and at the VA with patients with cancer, liver disease, and diabetes. Our multidisciplinary team includes experts in lifestyle medicine, bioinformatics, digital health, and computer science. And for the Accelerator Award, we would focus on de-risking life well. 
We provided intensive daily interaction in our clinical trials. Now we want to offer the same benefit with a lighter touch and demonstrate sufficient user engagement and recency frequency evidence needed to support LifeWell success. Great presentation. Um, so <clears throat> there are a lot of programs out there that have been proven for years and years with sort of group, you know, AA, group counseling, whatever. So how do you think about going up against what has been a pretty well-established format with peer counseling, group counseling, et cetera? So taking young adults, for example, a lot of young adults uh, don't necessarily identify with going to AA. And when we think about you know, alcohol use disorders or alcohol problems, <coughs> excessive alcohol use, we think of it as an iceberg, with the riskiest people often being at the top, but the majority of us actually being in the middle. And so young people, for example, often don't really think they have an alcohol problem because they look around at their peers in school and they say, well, this person's drinking more than me, so clearly I don't have a problem. So, so we think this is really has broader appeal for the majority of people who often even don't even know they have a problem, and it gives you sort of a novel on-ramp to kind of come in the door. We kind of started this program initially because um, if you take a lot of alcohol programs that are offered in colleges, for example, you can go on Reddit, for example, and read about UConn students drinking during the mandated requirements that their colleges have for them. And clearly they're missing out on a lot of benefit that they could gain from a program that would engage them better. And so our experience has been if you bring them in the door using a more novel on-ramp like wellness or well-being, they're more likely to engage with it. They're more likely to gain something from it. Um, they don't necessarily at the door out identify that they have an alcohol problem. Um, thank you for a really good presentation. Do, instead of going for the young adults, have you considered going for another group if it's for alcohol treatment or guidance? Uh, because I would say that there are more obvious groups that would potentially be more inclined to seek for this kind of help. Yeah, I mean, as, as I was mentioning, we see ourselves kind of starting, you know, with a small group that we've already had some success with and then starting to expand out. Somebody who has a more established alcohol problem, I would think of as more of a chronic disease population. So, so we definitely think there are other uh, populations to target. We've had success already with young people, so that's kind of why we wanted to continue with that. Um, but that's where we also would be looking for guidance and connections to get uh, support for how we should structure this and, and expand. Mm -hmm. Happy to ask a question. Uh, how do you think about the payers in this? Yeah, so we set ourselves up for colleges because they already have annual licenses that are like $40,000 that they pay for for these programs. But once we go you know, into a bigger situation like lifestyle medicine for chronic disease or pre-surgery, uh, I think there's a number of avenues. There are the CPT codes that have already been mentioned. There are uh, CPT codes for lifestyle counseling. There are CPT codes for digital therapeutic monitoring, patient monitoring. Um, but also, you know, we can go sort of the hinge health route, right, where we offer this as um, an opp opportunity for people through their employers where you have a base program, and then based on your participant involvement, you then pay a higher price. Mm -hmm. Thank you.